In this video, we are going to review how to configure your audio on your Apple laptop so that you can mix sound from YouTube videos, Netflix, Amazon, QuickTime, whatever, VLC. You can mix it out and play it through Teams or Google Meets. So this, I do want to, to let you know that this does work for both uh, Google Meets or meetings, whatever they're calling it, and Teams. Many people have uh, been frustrated because the Windows version of Teams has this feature built in. The Mac version is missing it. This is not going to be a short and simple and easy video. There are multiple steps to get this to work. The first thing that I would like to mention is that we're going to be working in a utility let me go to utilities here. We're going to be working in a utility called Audio MIDI Setup. And before I get started on the actual setup and installation, I want to review a few things. You'll notice that I have a lot of devices in here. So when I record, I'm actually using... Um, this microphone, this Q4 by Zoom. I'm using this as my microphone. And I also have my built-in MacBook Pro microphone. You might be using an Audio-Technica AT220, and it would be in here. You might be recording with your AirPods. It's very important that you understand that the instructions vary slightly based off of what devices you're using. A lot of people are just using their built-in microphone and their built-in speakers, and that's totally fine if it's working for you. But as you work more and more online, you start to realize that having a proper microphone is really important, and maybe having some headphones that are very comfortable is also really important. So I use these JVC Bluetooth headphones. They're very comfortable, and um, so in my audio setup, you're going to see that I'm mixing uh, my sound input with this Q4 microphone and my sound output with this JVC. You're not required to have these. You can just use your input as the Mac microphone or speakers or headphone jack, whatever you're using. So it's just something to get your head around and uh, be prepared for. Before going any further, pause this video. If you have not connected a microphone or uh, if you have not connected the headphones that you normally use, do all of that now because you're not going to want to do it during the next piece of this. You want to get all that set up before uh, moving forward. All of the audio work is to use um, a special program called Soundflower. Now, this company, Rogue Amoeba, they actually make much better software than Soundflower now. They have Loopback and some other tools that are used by podcasters. I use them. They are not free. Soundflower is kind of the older version of Loopback, and it is free. The reason I'm using Soundflower is because it is free. If you want to really get much better quality audio and more control, there's a combination of apps that you can put on a Mac to create a virtual mixing console. But that gets pretty complicated. I believe with Soundflower, it is possible to get this set up and distribute it, especially if you have uh, something like Jamf or Meraki on uh, teacher laptops. And so it could be configured uh, on their behalf as long as they, um, you know, I, I would say pushing it in the background would be a problem, but I think you could push it out and then uh, have them run through some configurations to make sure that it's working. It's not something that you can just install. There are steps, but I do believe you can get the Soundflower on the user's computers, send them a PDF for the final steps, uh, the steps that I'm going to cover later in this video, and um, the ones who can't figure it out, then you would have to do a one-on-one -on -one session. But once it is set up, it's going to work for a long time, and 
I think that you'll find it's very useful. Now, this is a video that I pre-recorded because I'm using this tech all the time, so it was actually hard for me to uninstall it, reinstall it. So I actually recorded this on another Apple that ha that I don't use for work. And uh, I'm going to be talking over this video as it's playing. So let me get it started. So the link to Soundflower, I'm going to put the link in the notes uh, in, the, in the description. So you don't need to worry about looking at the uh, URL. But um, it's hosted on GitHub. And you go here and then you go to the signed installer. And it looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, there are a few hiccups with the installation. So I'm just going to skip ahead. Okay, so after, after it's downloaded and you open the DMG file, this is what you need to do. Let me pause it right here. You want to open System Preferences, and you want to open Soundflower at the same time. There's going to be an issue, and you need to watch this in real time and you want to make sure you're you're like this and then you want to go into security and privacy now normally what happens is once you approve an installation the installation works with soundflower you have to hit open anyway let the installation fail and then do it again i know it sounds crazy but it's the only way that it seems to be working if you're running uh catalina once the installation is successful, close the window. You can move the installer to trash, doesn't matter. And if you go into sound, you should see Soundflower 2 channel and 64 channel. So we're going to use the MIDI system built into Apple and build two new devices. So you want to go to Go Utilities. and audio MIDI setup. Now you'll see I have something called multi-output device and you'll see that I have something called mic video mix. I'm going to make a new multi-output device so you want to go plus sign multi-output device and then here you just check whatever your output device is. Now in my case my output device would be my headset. And I also want to check Soundflower 2 channel. The reason I want to do this is because when I play a YouTube video for my students or my peers, I want to be able to hear the video at the same time they are hearing it. If I don't make this device, once I start playing the video, if I tell my system to use the Soundflower two-channel output, then my headphones are going to cut out. So you actually need to tick both of these, just like that. And then you can close this out and your device is saved. I'm actually going to remove this because I already have one. So you don't have to do anything else. And I believe if you want to, you can double click this and rename it. So you can rename it whatever you want. But the basic idea is that you do two channel here and then you want to do whatever your output is. Now, let's say that you are outputting to multiple things like a headset and something else. You can go ahead and tick all of the ones that show up in this box. Input device, you want to set up your input device. So what you want to do is you want to hit the plus sign and you want to hit create aggregate device. Now, I've, I've already done that. so. I will show you, you can open it up and you can double click on it and change the name. And then you want to select all the inputs that you would normally use. So for example, I use the Q4 as my input source. I'm going to click that. I'm not using the Mac Pro microphone with this, but maybe you have something else you're mixing in. Most people only have one microphone, so I'm just going to choose this one. And then you want to choose Soundflower 2 channel. Now you have an aggregate audio device. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to send both your microphone and the Soundflower audio, which is audio from playing on your machine, from YouTube, Netflix, whatever, out to people listening to your meeting and Teams. What I haven't done is looked at 
the possibility of pulling some type of preference file out of Apple and configuring it with all of this and pushing it with an MDM, that would be a big help. So if not only installing, not only installing Soundflower for people, but being able to push a configuration out so it's already done for them, that would really save a lot of time because this process has to be done for each user. Now, I know it seems like a lot of steps, but this part I found with my users, they can do. I have a PDF that walks them through setting up their, um, their inputs and outputs, and they're fine. Most people get hung up on the installation because it says failed. And it's not really failed, right? It just needs to install two scripts, so you have to do it twice. But most people get hung up on that, and they don't move forward. So after this is done, and after it is done correctly, you should be able to go into sound, and you should see your aggregate device, your new, this is mine, mic video mix, and you should be able to see your, where's it at? Output, sorry. You should be able to see your new multi-output device. For this next part, I'm going to show you how to switch back and forth and use the technology in Teams. Now, I'm using the Teams app. You can use this in the browser. I do prefer, as the instructor, the teacher, the leader, whatever, to use the app. I love the fact the app can blur the background, whereas the browser version can't. But um, you should be able to do all this in the browser version as well as the app. If you hear any crackling, I have a little bit of feedback going on because I'm trying to demonstrate uh, audio features while I'm using those audio features. You're not going to get any popping and crackling if you do this properly. So please don't feel like that is something you're going to have to live with. You will have to live with it if you start making training videos, but if not, you should be fine. All right, so I'm going to actually start a meeting. And I'm going to turn my camera off. And I'm going to hit meet now. I'm going to go in here and uh, my microphone is on, of course. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to show device settings. In here, I'm going to choose, this will say custom setup, that's fine. Multi-output device, that's fine. Now, we set up this uh, mixed aggregate called mic video mix. I set this up. When I've left this on as the default, um, I have had issues. And so at first, I just set up the speaker and I went in here and I would just switch between, I would just manually switch between the microphone and the two channel output. So this is me speaking and this would be my videos. But what was happening is sometimes it wouldn't switch. It just wouldn't work. And I figured out that what has to happen is for this to work properly. And this is in Teams and Google Meets. For this to work properly and all the time, you have to have this set just like we reviewed. You have to have this set as mic video mix. I'm going to drop this back down. I'll explain in a minute. And then you have to have this output set. The reason I'm not leaving it up here is because I want to avoid the crackling that's occurring with the feedback I'm getting. Again, this is because I'm recording. You won't have this problem. Um, so you want to set it like this. And when you set it like that, you can switch between these two. Or you, can, or you can switch between your computer mic, whatever, and the switch will work. So by enabling both devices in the sound preferences through that aggregate device, you now can hot switch between your devices. What this means is when you're playing a video for your students, you can't talk over the video at the same time. Um, you need to switch the microphone off and play the video. I have had luck. Um, keeping it mixed and talking while it's playing. But generally, I found that students and teachers find it distracting. So what I wanted to do is just enable this hot switch. So while I'm playing a video, I would put it here on two channel, start playing the video.
you should have you should have seen the video audio bouncing in the levels so you know it's working now the next thing that I do is I make sure the video is in its own window so I want it in its own window I don't want it I don't want a window full of tabs I just want the video dedicated and then I go here to share screen and I find my video here and now this is presenting I'm gonna switch this back over And that is the general concept. The general concept is uh, prepping your video content, turning the audio on, sharing your screen, and hitting play. What that's going to do is it is going to allow anyone in your team to watch the video and hear the audio all synced up. The main skill that you have to master is just switching between your microphone and Soundflower 2 channel. Once, once you can master that, then you're going to have clean audio going out, and then you can switch over to your mic and have clean audio from your mic. One thing I would like to add is I've experimented with YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, uh, playing videos, and doing voiceovers. And I can tell you that the microphone and audio mix works really well if you're doing a screen recording. So if I have a video and I'm playing it right now, and I want to do a screen recording with QuickTime, I can actually hear the video and record over it and do a voice annotation, and it's very smooth. But when I go into any of these conferencing programs like Teams or Meets, what happens is I either get degraded audio when I try to mix them, or I get some kind of conflict. So that's why I wanted to make that switch where I can hot switch between mic and the Soundflower 2 channel. You may have better results, and you may be on an older operating system, and it could work better. Apple could put out an update and change everything. But generally, what I'm trying to do is get to a configuration that I know will deliver really clean sound uh, between the teacher's presentation and the students on their end. I've seen some teachers uh, simply turn their microphone up on their laptop, turn their speakers up, play the content, and let it loop back into the mic. The sound coming out of that isn't very good. It's hard to hear. And if the students are on iPads or mobile devices, it's really, really hard to hear. Now, they can put headphones in. They can turn it up. They can overmodulate it. But the quality is just really bad. So once I introduced this concept, uh, teachers really responded. And uh, the next step with this is how to incorporate this into something like a virtual choir. So maybe working on those settings, making the quality even better so that um, students can use this setup to play music. They can accompany that music with their voice live and that can go to their teacher. And that's kind of what I'm looking at next. So thank you for watching. I know this wasn't uh, a short and brief video. I know there are a lot of steps. Um, and if you have any questions or you find a mistake in this video, please let me know. There could be a much better way to do this. And I am happy to review other methods and make more videos if it's helpful.